in the near future, your kids will eat insects. Food made of insects. In their lunchbox. Hmm. It might sound scary, a little bit creepy. If I look at your faces, a little bit disgusting. Well, actually, it's not. It makes a lot of sense. And I'm here to tell you why. In the West, our meat production is very narrow. When you go to your supermarket, you, will, you can choose between a huge variety of foods. The fruits, the vegetables, legumes, cereals. Until you get to the cooler with the meat. And what do you find? Well, you find beef, pork and chicken. And maybe a little bit of goose for Christmas. We basically have three animal species for our meat production. And think about, there are 5,000 mammals and more than 10,000 bird species on Earth. And in human history, we have been able to domesticate 13 mammals, less than 10 bird species, have the chicken, the goose, the duck, turkey, pigeon, a few more. Don't count like the parrot, it's, it's, it's for food. So we eat beef, pork and chicken. 90% of the meat you buy and carry home from the supermarket here in our part of the world in Northern Europe is beef, pork and chicken. So why is it so? Why are we not more curious? There are plenty of species out there. And first of all, why is it the problem that our meat production is so narrow? Well, the problem is that the few species that we mass produce, our livestock animals, they use a lot of space, they use a lot of water, and land use and water use is really critical. And also, of the man-made greenhouse emission which threaten our climate, well, our livestock production makes as much damage as our transportation when we fly and drive the cars. Well, on top of it, with the global development in the population, the demand for meat and animal food within the next generation will nearly double, and so will the problems. So we have to look for alternatives. So the big question is, are there animals out there which can be produced on a tiny space using little water and still be as tasty and nutritious as the meat that we know? Well, logically, yes, there are alternatives, but we, we have to look in corners of the world where we maybe usually don't look well for cutting edge, innovative, super efficient food production. We have to look for countries where animal foods are more diverse. Here, in a market in Thailand, it could be in Cambodia and in many places, they have a very high diversity of animal food. You can find snails, you may find, um, you can find frogs, even snakes, and you find insects. Also in Africa, many countries, not all countries, they have insects on the menu. In South America, well, if you count worldwide, across all the countries, you will actually find that more than 2,000 insect species are eaten somewhere. 2,000 edible insect species. Well, here is an important thing I have to mention here and tell you. If you ask people in Thailand or in other countries eating insects, hey, 
Do you eat insects? And I would typically say, well, no, no. Well, I eat, I eat this cricket. It's delicious. You should try it. Or this, this water beetle is good. Or the palm weevil. Or the termites, the grasshoppers. Even the wasp, uh, wasps. And, but they don't just eat any insects. Like, you don't eat bird. You don't eat birds. You eat chicken, you eat turkey, you eat pigeon. But you don't eat the parrot and the, or the robin or the woodpecker. You don't eat birds. It's the same with the insects. Now, you might be thinking, well, 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 insects. Can it really, can it really be a full nutritious meal? I mean, can I take away my beef and my chicken and then just eat insects? Uh, I have conducted nutrition research in children in Cambodia and in Kenya. And what we were looking for were nutritious food sources for some of the most critical nutrients for a child to be healthy. A child needs a lot of different nutrients to be healthy. You know that. But we also know that some nutrients are more critical than others. And in countries like Cambodia and Kenya, where many children are malnourished, it can be critical to get enough of the good stuff. And we know, we know that meat and other animal foods are rich in some of these critical nutrients. It's an important source for the good quality protein and for some of the micronutrients like iron and zinc. So what we did in our research was to look for local food sources rich in iron and zinc. And what did we find? We found termites in Kenya, we found tarantulas in Cambodia. Great food, good protein, rich in iron and zinc. And then what did we do? Well, we made baby food out of it, mixed it with other foods, and then we mixed in the tarantulas in Cambodia, the termites in Kenya. And the mothers were happy to feed their babies because they, these are just normal food. And what about the babies? Well, we didn't just feed this one happy baby. We actually fed nearly 1,000 babies in Cambodia and Kenya. And the babies, they were healthy and happy. Well, so the question is, are the termites and then tarantulas then the solution? Well, not quite. No, they are not the solution to, our, to renew our animal production. And why not? It was tasty and healthy. Well, the problem is then the ter termites and the tarantulas that we use for the babies were collected from the wild. And we cannot, it's not sustainable. We cannot collect enough termites and tarantulas to feed all the babies. Cambodia, Kenya, and elsewhere. The solution is that we have to turn insects into livestock. Six-legged, mini livestock, even eight legs, if you also take the tarantulas. They are not quite insects, they have extra legs. So the, so the challenge, what we are working on now, is how to domesticate insects, how to mass produce them on a tiny space with little water. We just have to figure out how to do it. Well, how to breed them, how to feed them, how to treat them if they get sick. Well, insects are animals, so like the cow and the pig and the cat and the dogs, they get sick sometimes. So we need insect doctors. Well, we also need to keep them in houses or in stables, insect stables. So how does an insect stable look like? Well, 
This is an insect stable. Again, we can learn from Thailand. In Thailand, in Thailand they, they like insects, or they like some insects. They like cricket very much. And they have figured out, well, instead of running around and catch them from the nature, you never know where to find them and how many to find. Well, they have turned them into livestock. So they keep them in stables like this. This is a cricket farmer in his cricket stable. He hatched his tiny small cricket eggs. And after two months, he can harvest them. He can sell them on the market. He can even sell it to the cricket food industry which they now have in Thailand, and he can eat it with his family. My research partners in, in Kenya, they now build insect stables. They learn from Thailand, they have their own ideas for cricket stables, maybe also other insect stables, to produce nutritious food and for the farmers to make money. This is also an insect stable. It's a mealworm stable. Mealworms are larvae from, from, a, from a beetle. And it's actually here in, in Europe. It's in Denmark. And mealworms, they are happy to be kept in stables like this. And you can see, you can produce on a tiny space. You can stack them on top of each other. So from this research and what is going on around the world now, we actually now know that there are at least four groups of insects which can be kept as livestock. We have the crickets, you have seen the mealworms, also grasshoppers, they are quite happy to be kept in a stable. And then we have different fly species where we can very efficiently produce the larvae, and for now, we mainly use it for protein to feed our own livestock. So to wrap up, insects are nutritious animal food. Eat them instead of your beef, your pork, and your chicken. Insects can be mass-produced. Some insects can be mass-produced, and they use the feet very efficiently, they grow fast, and therefore they produce less greenhouse gas. So insects are our new livestock, the livestock of the future. But, 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 there is a but. You wouldn't eat insects unless it tastes good, would you? No. Well, these Kenyan children, they are having cricket biscuit. We served it for our research. And they liked it. They wanted more. And the biscuits, they were nutritious and healthy. Well, what about in our part of the world? Actually, for now, there is more or less a gastronomic revolution going on. Chefs are excited. Wow, insects brings in new taste, new inspiration from Asia, from Africa, from South America. We can learn from each other. This is Roberto Flores, head chef of the Nordic Food Lab. Here he makes the most delicious, most tasty, most delicate dish of bee larvae the larvae from the honeybee. So, what do you think? Insects in the lunchbox in the future? It sounds scary? Well, not quite. Just try it. Thank you. <laughs>